name is Super Z. I'm the marketing director here at TW Technologies. Uh, joining me today is going to be Sam Plummer, who is our Epicor consultant here um, and our resident expert of most things Epicor. Um, if at any time during the presentation today you have questions, you can send them through the question box that's on your screen. There'll be an interactive Q&A at the end, and we will get to all the questions then. For those of you who might not be familiar with 2W Technologies, we are a full-service technology firm. We specialize in end-to-end -end solutions for the manufacturing industry. We're a certified Epicor Gold Partner, um, as well as a Gold-level Microsoft Partner, to name a few. For more information on any of our products or services, you can visit us at 2wtech.com. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to Sam, and he's going to get us started. Sam? Good afternoon, everyone. Or uh, for those of you who aren't in the Eastern time zone, uh, perhaps good morning is more appropriate. But in any case, uh, it's a pleasure to join you here today and tell you about uh, one of the many new products and features that that our partner Epicor has been uh, working on and rolling out lately. In particular, uh, uh, I became aware over the last few months of Epicor data discovery and thought it might be appropriate to spend a few minutes uh, sharing uh, a little bit of knowledge that I have about this product with all of you. And apparently, since you signed up for the webinar, there's some interest out there uh, in learning a little bit about the product. So, um, first thing I'd like to talk about here is what is Epicor Data Discovery? Well, in generic terms, it's a data visualization tool. Um, you may be familiar with lots of others out there. There's uh, industry products like ClickView, like Microsoft Power BI, and quite a few other tools out there that really give you enhanced data visualization. And, you know, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't even mention, you know, Microsoft Excel and tools like charts and graphs and pivot tables. So certainly those, you know, fill the bill as well. Now, what's special and unique about Epicor Data Discovery is that it comes kind of out of the box with many predefined data sources. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about what a data source is here in a few minutes. But the bottom line is uh, kind of that out of the box functionality, you know, the ability to create, you know, data views against your ERP data from the moment you install the product, whether that be, you know, uh, analysis of quoting activity and analysis of orders, analysis of inventory, analysis of production data, uh, any and all of those things, or even uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable, there's data views built into the product for that. So it's, it's really something you can get started with very quickly. Another nice thing, and I think you'll agree after you look at, at a few minutes of demo, it's uh, a powerful visual tool for analyzing complex data sets. Um, and I'm going to attempt to illustrate that in, in the demo that we're going to do in just a few minutes. Also, in addition to out-of-the-box functionality, all of the data views and dashboards that are deployed out of the box with Epicor Data Discovery, we can also add our own to those. And, and in essence, uh, by the way, for those of you who are familiar with the Epicor ERP, uh, a data view within Epicor Data Discovery is also known as a BAQ within the Epicor ERP. So if you can build BAQs, you can build data views. And I'm guessing uh, most or all of you probably are familiar with those. Another important point about Epicor Data Discovery Beginning with Epicor 10.2.100, that was when Epicor first introduced uh, the Epicor Data Discovery as an extension to the ERP. So if you're running 10.2 point anything, you already have both the software and, more importantly, the licenses for Epicor Data Discovery. And the bottom line is it's a one-to-one -one relationship between your office users in Epicor ERP and Epicor Data Discovery users. A couple of additional points. There's really two ways for your users to interact with Epicor Data Discovery. One 
beginning again with Epicor 10.2 was the introduction of the Epicor Active Home page. So if your users are currently using the Epicor Active Home page, uh, Epicor Data Discovery Views and Epicor Data Discovery Dashboards can be deployed directly onto the Epicor Active Home page. In other words, seamlessly integrated with the rest of the Epicor ERP. Secondly, um, Epicor Data Discovery also runs very well within a web browser. And in a few minutes during my demo, I'll actually be demoing uh, Epicor Data Discovery as access through Google Chrome. Uh, really works with any web browser. And one of the things that I'll be doing here in a few minutes is uh, during that, uh, that demo, I'll be launching Google Chrome in developer mode with a, a device emulator to emulate an Apple uh, iPad in particular, because it's one of my favorite non-Windows devices, and show you how Epicor Data Discovery uh, would behave if the client device were an iPad. So anyway, um, that's a little bit about what it is. I did want to take a few minutes and briefly discuss how it works. And I'm going to address kind of two separate aspects of the audience here. First of all, for those of you folks out there who are technical in nature, Epicor Data Discovery is an IIS application, Microsoft Internet Information Server, uh, back-ended by yet another SQL Server database. Uh, the really cool thing about it is, though, is as far as administering and installing it, it is installed, deployed, and managed through the Epicor administration console as an Epicor extension. So just like Epicor Web Access or Epicor Mobile Access or uh, any of the other extension products, Epicor Education, Epicor Help, etc., all of those are extensions. This is just one more extension in the library. And in the upper left-hand side of my screen there, I don't expect you to be able to see it because it's kind of small, but basically you install, configure, and deploy uh, uh, Epicor Data Discovery through a single screen in the Epicor Administration Console. It's really very straightforward. Now, second of all, for all you non-technical types out there, um, here's the important things to know about Epicor Data Discovery. And for you folks, I'm giving you the picture in the lower left-hand side of the screen. Uh, looks like an iPad turned sideways. Well, that's actually exactly what it is with an Epicor Data Discovery homepage displayed. So the bottom line is for everyone else, using Epicor Discovery is as simple as launching your browser, logging in with an Epicor username and password, or if you're a single sign-on customer, using your single sign-on architecture to authenticate to the application, and then start pointing, clicking, dragging, dropping, and visualizing your data. So that is really, I think, the high points of what you need to know about how this product is deployed and how it works. So it's time to do a little bit of a demo. All right, so over here, I have my Epicor virtual machine. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, 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 two servers hosted in an Azure environment. Uh, and we are running against the, the standard Epicor demo database. So if any of these customers, you know, Addison and Barriston Engineering and Sites look familiar to you, they should because this is the Epicor demo database. All right. So um, first of all, you'll notice we are running the Google Chrome browser here. So I'm going to go ahead and provide a username and a password to log in because I'm not doing single sign-on. And here we have the Epicor Data Discovery homepage. And by the way, this is personalized just like so many other things in Epicor by user. So each user, when they log in, sees their views and really the user interface is divided into a couple of areas. First of all, if you're along the top line of the screen, 
we have kind of a standard toolbar with login and log out and settings and access to an online help application, by the way. Um, down here on the next level, we have primarily, uh, this is the, the, the working parts, if you will, of Epicor Data Discovery. And Epicor Data Discovery is centered around two things. First of all, discovery views, which are activated by pressing this button right here. And again, you'll see, uh, for example, probably 95% of the data views you see here were delivered out of the box with Epicor Data Discovery. Um, now, in this case, you can see there's one called Aged Receivables that was deployed by Epicor. And then I've created a personalized version of that. So it just happens to have my initials at the end to distinguish that. I'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, Epicor Data Discovery Views, and then once we've created any data discovery views that we need or customized ones that were deployed with the base product, we can go ahead and create data discovery dashboard views. And data discovery dashboard views combine one or more Epicor data discovery views uh, to provide business insight. So what I'd like to do now is explain a little bit about uh, an Epicor data discovery view. And again, um, one of the things you'll notice here is these uh, begin with a data source. And again, in the base product, in the standard licensing for Epicor data discovery, all of your Epicor ERP EAQs are available to be used as Epicor data discovery data sources. Now in particular, and this is actually one uh, that's kind of an extension of the standard Epicor training is the ability to create a dashboard view that is based on a system BAQ called, uh, this is basically that BAQ that feeds this, the Epicor customer tracker and the orders pane. So in this case, over here along the left-hand side of the screen, I see, uh, and these things, if you're familiar with working with uh, various kinds of, of uh, data visualization and data analysis tools, the concepts of measures and dimensions. And these are, are maintain a high degree of fidelity to most, you know, kind of high level industry standard data analysis models, as far as, you know, uh, calling what is a dimension and what is a measure and counted things. But for example, we can browse down through this list of measures and dimensions, and we can add those data elements over here into various areas of the view. So in this case, when I created this view based on a BAQ that contains information about my orders, I, ha I gave myself the ability to create rows in this particular bar chart in this case. I can analyze my orders by customer ID, I can analyze by territory, by country, or by product group. And so that's what the concept of rows are. Over here, the other important concept is this concept of columns, which is what data is being displayed. And in this case, regardless of what row is being selected, I'm basically summarizing the extended price of all the orders. So basically this represents total dollar value uh, based on various dimensions of the data. I also have the ability over here, along the right-hand side of the screen, to specify filters. And for example, if I wanted to add additional filters, uh, for example, I wanted to add um, a product group, I think I already have that, but it's very simple to add additional filters as a user. I can either add it to the filters to the rows data, to the columns, or I can highlight certain data based on presence or absence of data fields. So that's a quick overview of what an Epicor data discovery view is and how I might use it. And obviously, um, for example, if I wanted to analyze right now my sales by product group, but I wanted to filter that, for example, to a specific country sales, 
I can expand that filter criteria. It automatically looks at my data and says, well, you know, let's change what's included in our data set. And you can see as I do, the data view is dynamically changing. I also have the ability, if I select a specific region, a data region, in this case, the total of sales orders for fabricated parts, parts that are in that product group, I also have drill down capability from here. And I can drill into another dimension and say, well, I'd like to see those sales perhaps detailed by customer. And now I see that data drilled down. And again, you know, as you kind of expect, our customer Dalton comes out at the top of the list, even though we're in drilled down data. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and return to the Epicor homepage, but I want to point out something. So as I go back to the Epicor data discovery homepage, it's prompting me to say, you've made, you have unsafe changes to this data view. You want to discard them. If I were to answer no here, I'd get prompted and I could either save this, uh, this my changes to this data view, or I could save this as a new data view. And in fact, I don't want to discard those at this moment. Maybe I want to do save as. So I'm clicking over here on the little ellipses to bring up this menu. And I can create a new view. I can give that new view a name. Nothing too imaginative here. And I can describe it if I want to. And then notice down here in the folder locations, all data views and all data data, all Epicor data discovery dashboards can be shared as either private, in other words, only accessible to the current user, or shared. In other words, these can be accessed by any other Epicor data discovery user. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. I really don't want to save my changes at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and discard those. So certainly accessing the Epicor data discovery uh, interface through a web browser is an option. Now, what I do want to do here is just quickly show you what Epicor data discovery would look like in a mobile device. So what I'm going to rely on for that is Chrome's developer tools and in particular, the device view mode. And in this case, I'm emulating an Apple iPad, but there are other devices available uh, to emulate in Google Chrome. And this is essentially how the application would look and behave. So for example, if I want to drill into this guy, I can drill down into it. And all the same sorts of choices that we have in the normal environment, we also have here. So depending on what your device requirements and who your end users are, I think uh, certainly this opens up some new opportunities for you in terms of being able to present and analyze data in uh, non-Windows, non-desktop environments. So um, the other aspect and the other way for users to interact with Epicor Data Discovery, besides here in the browser, is through the Epicor Active Homepage. I'm going to go ahead and launch my Epicor ERP client. And I'm going to make sure that I say that I want this session to utilize the active home page. And in this case, I've already customized my home screen out of the box to include quite a few Epicor data discovery views. And if you're familiar with the Epicor active homepage, we can add additional both data discovery chart and KPI or dashboard views here to the active homepage. If I simply drag and drop it on, I can say what data discovery view do I want? And I can add it. And then furthermore, I can edit those. 
I can resize them, I can do whatever I want here and deploy as many of those as I want to here into the Epicor Active homepage. So I think this provides a, a, a really good way to provide summarized kind of KPI type data that can be driven you know, directly into the user's home screen in the ERP, uh, along with all of the standard user interface features, you know, here's our, our standard Epicor menus as well. So definitely a, a viable alternative for uh, presenting data. If you're already, for example, using Epicor VAQs and dashboards, this provides another tool set for you uh, in terms of, of ways both for uh, the IT group to present data and number two for analytical minded users to visualize and present data in either a, a private dashboard accessible only to them or in a shared data view that can be shared across the organization. So at this point, I've shown you just a few things that I wanted to point out about Epicor data discovery. And now what I'd like to do is come back and resume my presentation and talk a little bit about uh, some things that I think you should know. First of all, what does Epicor data discovery cost? Well, beginning with Epicor 10.2.100, and uh, there have been some changes from 10.2.100 to 200 to 300 with respect to Epicor data discovery. Um, in 10.2.300, standard user licenses for Epicor data discovery are included with your Epicor office user licenses. So in other words, if you have 25 concurrent office user licenses for Epicor ERP, you also have 25 concurrent licenses for Epicor data discovery. Now, notice a distinction here between Epicor standard user licenses and advanced licensing. The important thing to be aware of with regard to advanced licensing is the key feature that is enabled with data discovery advanced licensing. And these are additional purchase price licenses, which you may or may not need. They give you the ability to add in non-Epicor ERP data to your data analysis views within Epicor data discovery. That might be an existing data warehouse application that you have. That might be an external application, maybe a CRM, maybe uh, an engineering management software package, could be just about anything. But that's the difference between standard enables access to all of your Epicor ERP data. Everything from quotes through the general ledger and everything else in between. Next important point about understanding Epicor data discovery is this is fully compliant and designed inside the Epicor ICE architecture. In other words, uh, if your existing application servers and database servers have adequate headspace, um, you can install this right along. You don't need to provision, provision additional servers in order to deploy this product. Um, with that being said, depending on your server load and performance and database size and all those other sort of parameters, this may drive you to deploy additional application servers. And in that case, due to the flexibility of the Epicor ICE architecture, it is a, a very straightforward process to deploy additional application and or database servers into the ICE framework and be able to extend and scale your deployment adequately. So last question is, if we want to get started, what does it take to do this? And realistically, um, again, you know, back to that qualifying statement, if your existing servers have adequate headspace, you know, disk space, CPU, transactional processing network bandwidth, all the standard metrics that you would look at, um, you can deploy 
and get started with this product in a matter of hours or certainly in a matter of days. It is not a complex or difficult product to install. And I do want to contrast this a little bit and, and maybe eliminate a little bit of confusion. There is also a separate Epicor product called Epicor Data Analysis or EDA versus the product we're talking about here, EDD. EDA is a complete separate uh, data warehouse application that works on a replica of your ERP database, whereas Epicor Data Discovery does not require a database replica. So the, the SQL server footprint of this product is not a heavyweight. But of course, you do need to consider, you know, in, in planning your deployment, do you intend to analyze very large data sets? And if I do, what will be the impact of analyzing very large data sets in EDD on my existing application and database servers? But the bottom line is, I think certainly from a, a testing and piloting point of view, this product you can get your feet wet on very quickly and start to answer your own questions about what can EDD do in my business. All right. So um, in terms of the how, what are the steps to getting started? I really have two possible pathways for you here, although there's certainly more. One would be do it yourself. Like I said, beginning at 10.2, this application, both software and licensing, are already included with the overall Epicor ERP. So you can simply go to Epic Web, locate the install guide for Epicor Data Discovery, and armed with a knowledgeable system administrator, of your existing Epicor database and application servers, you can install and deploy this extension probably in a matter of an hour or two. And certainly, once you've done that and you have Epicor data discovery up and running, there are Epicor education materials available, and they're available both uh, through the Epicor embedded education, if you subscribe to that, or also through Epicor University online and classroom-based training. So certainly, I uh, don't want to discourage you, but want to provide alternatives. Your other option for getting started with this is, of course, to call us at 2W Tech. And one of the things that we're offering is uh, a starter pack for Epicor Data Discovery that includes our services to help you uh, review your current environment and plan your installation to actually perform or assist you in performing the installation and deployment and spend some time training your anal analysis type users, whether they're business analysts, whether the line of business users, or perhaps uh, technology professionals in your organization with an introduction to using, and deploying, and customizing, and sharing uh, Epicor data discovery views and dashboards. All right. Well, at this point, we've reached the end of the, the formal and structured portion of the presentation. And uh, I believe we are going to kind of open things up for Sue uh, uh, to receive some questions from the audience. And hopefully, I can provide you some intelligent answers to those. So at this point, thank you very much for your attention. And I'm going to pass the mic back to Sue. All right, great. Thank you, Sam. Um, if you have not submitted a question yet um, and you have one, go ahead and submit it through the questions box and we will add it to the queue for Sam. Um, okay, Sam, first question. There's a, quite a bit of flexibility to make and save views. Is there information regarding a strategy for view deployment that would keep a view list from building up into the hundreds or thousands? Well, that's obviously a, a very good question. and. Um, I think it would be my recommendation at this point that if this product or another similar product for that matter, I mean, in some ways, I would model your particular organization's policy on this in the same way that 
do you govern uh, who can create the AQs within the Apicorea ERP, who can create and customize dashboards, and how those are deployed. But my suggestion would be this, that um, you, you probably would need to establish governance around this. In other words, the default would be all data views or dashboards would be saved as private, which would certainly save on the clutter. And then collectively, uh, and whether that's through a committee or a kind of a, a, an editor publisher type role within the organization of kind of looking at all those data views that get deployed and, and maybe exercising a little bit of editorial control to say, oh, this one right here would be really useful for a lot of people. Let's make this particular view instead of we'll kind of promote it from private view status to a shared view. Now, on that shared view side, um, we do have the ability to create a folder structure within that. So uh, again, out of the box, um, Epicor Data Discovery deployed basically two folders, a public or a private and a shared view. But for example, within the shared folder, we can further drill down and we could say, well, you know, here's uh, sales and here's another folder for operations. Um, and, and I often find that when doing uh, uh, projects like this, that model of the Epicor menu structure, you know, sales management, service management, production management, material management, finance and executive, and kind of using that same hierarchical breakdown. If, if our users are accustomed to the Epicor menus in that way, um, we shouldn't be asking a lot of them to be able to apply that same logical structure inside of the Epicor data discovery product. So that would be my suggestion twofold. Uh, again, kind of an editorial board where we regularly review uh, Epicor data discovery views and dashboards. Uh, take those ones that are particularly well crafted and useful and promote them into the shared space. And then in terms of managing, managing the shared space, come up with a folder structure that makes sense for your organization. And as a starting point, I always suggest the quote unquote traditional Epicor view of you know, sales and production, et cetera. Okay. Next question, um, and fair warning, we have quite a few. Um, when considering the license, licensing and the use of non-Epicor data sources, are UD, are UD tables fields considered Epicor data sources and therefore can be used with standard licensing? Yes, it well, and, and so let's address that first. So the bottom line is if we can include that data in a BAQ, which obviously, uh, let's say for example, we add some user-defined fields into uh, the part table. We can obviously include those in our BAQ. And so by virtue of the fact that they can be in a BAQ, they can therefore be in, a, in an EDD data source. And so that is not considered uh, external data. That is considered internal to the ERP and therefore standard licensing would apply to that. The only time we need the advanced licensing would be, um, let's say we, we had a completely external CRM, you know, uh, and we want to make data from that external CRM available in EDD views, that would be the case where we need those uh, uh, advanced EDD licenses. I don't know if you touched on this right there or not, but there was a question also that was, if you're logged into EDD on the web, does it use up a full ERP license? I would have to check on that. What I believe, so in in my case, and well, let's take a quick look. And sometimes deviating off script like this, it's dangerous, but let's just go look at the Epicor admin console here. And let's go take a look. So we are logged into the Epicor ERP in this session right here, and we are logged into Epicor EDD in this browser session right here. 
So let's go look and see what the Epicor admin console is telling us. Interesting, we're not using any sessions. Let's go do something. So now we have sales or entry open. Let's see if we can see that section here. And we do. At the same time, let's go open one of our data discovery dashboards and do something. So we're actively using that. If you're seeing what I'm seeing, I I believe the answer to that is one user, if they're currently logged into both EDD and to the Epicore ERP, is consuming one concurrent use license in this case. Okay, uh, next question. What version was this demo done on? We are running 10.2.300 point whatever the latest greatest is. I think it's nine. Let's take a look. Yeah, point nine. And by the way, here's a bigger view of that screen that we deploy this with. It's pretty simple stuff. Another question, Sam, which I think kind of goes with that one a little bit is, what is the differences between EDD for 10.2.200 and 10.2.300? Would you recommend a wait until 300 or does it work well in 200? Um, so as I was just a matter of, let's say two or three weeks ago, I had installed 10.2.200 let, and I think it was maybe dot eleven or something like that. That was the level that my my dev server that we're practicing on was at, and I installed and deployed ten point two point two hundred EDD and prepared my demo. I felt like we were in pretty good shape, so I went ahead and rolled the dice and I upgraded my demo to ten point two point three hundred point nine and redeployed and. If there was a difference, I couldn't see it. So you probably have to dig through the release notes to find out what changed. But to my, you know, kind of user's eye view of things, I couldn't see any difference at all. I'm sure newer is better, though. I'm always a firm, you know, Epicore is pretty good about being progressive in, in patching and improving the application. What I do know has changed, uh, and I don't know the finer points of this, is in regard to licensing. I think Epicor has been making uh, very uh, distinct efforts at streamlining the licensing aspect of EDD, especially as it relates to uh, the inclusion of EDD standard license codes in your master Epicor license file. In other words, uh, in, the, oops, we have to close this window, in this file right here, if you're familiar with this. So if there's a difference, it's probably related to licensing, but I noticed none. Okay. What does the security setup look like for this? Um, in essence, it completely inherits your Epicor ERP security. So um, if you're using non, well, whether you're using integrated or non-integrated security, this is precisely uh, like that. So in other words, 
when I logged in to Epicor Data Discovery here, I logged in and let me kind of clean up my view here. Turn off my dev tools and we'll get back to the home screen here. And I'll go ahead and log out. So this is functionally equivalent. This is an Epicor user ID. So if you're doing single sign-on or if you're doing non-single sign-on, whatever security you have in place in the ERP is applied here as well. However, notice that, for example, your Epicor menu security, that, that if you're relying exclusively on Epicor menu security, which most deployments are, this may or may not require some additional security review on your part. Okay. Do you have to be on your network to use an iPhone browser? Can I see a KPI when I am on the road? That is really a function of your IT infrastructure. If you have, in this case, HTTPS or SSL connection to the server where EDD is deployed, then yes. But that's that's really not, I mean, that's a question for your IT department's security policy. Um, depending on what your security policy drives, um, they're, they're really, in my mind, you have a couple of options. You could deploy a VPN and require the remote device to connect to the VPN and then provide this on a private, virtual private network basis. Or if your organization elects to, you could expose the URL for EDD to the internet. And that's really a security question for your organization. It is SSL secured with a standard SSL certificate. So there is a, a level of protection there for your data. Okay, next question. Is it possible to view real-time production times for each process on the plant floor? Yes. Yeah, there, there is no, like, for example, I, I mentioned uh, a data warehouse product, uh, like, for example, Epicor data analysis. In a data warehouse product, like Epicor data analysis, there are background processes that have to run to uh, summarize and tabulate your production ERP data into the data warehouse. And then your data views in those environments are based on that summarized tabulated data in the data warehouse. In this application, there is no data warehouse. You are querying the production data directly. So in other words, if your BAQ is querying the labor detail data set and an employee just hit the clock out button and ended activity and reported a quantity, if you refresh an Epicor data discovery view that is based on that BAQ, then that data will be immediately available and included in the analysis on screen. Okay, and I think the last question, uh, what are the system requirements to install Epicor data discovery? Um, well, thanks for asking that. I, I went and searched for that. In fact, um, on Epic Web, let me see if I have this document. Yeah, this is the guy. This is available from Epic Web, by the way. Um, or yeah, I'm sure if you email myself or Sue or any of your other contacts here at 2W Tech, uh, we can provide this to you, but it's you know, freely downloadable. And the system requirements are a bit vague because I was anticipating this question. And unfortunately, doesn't talk a whole lot about that except this little blurb, which isn't super helpful. So um, what I did was I said, well, um, if I were gonna advise you on what are the system requirements, Number one, um, 
do your application and SQL servers. And, and I'm assuming, you know, in, in the smallest environments, those are probably a single instance of a Windows operating system. In larger deployments, there may be many application servers and maybe a clustered database server in the back in the back end. But in any case, um, here's what the footprint looks like. Your application server or servers where you're going to deploy EDD needs to have adequate CPU headroom. And you're going to have to define what that is. But if we were gathering performance stats on your application server or servers and you were routinely at 65 or 70 percent CPU utilization, I'd say yeah, you probably don't want to place a whole lot of additional load on that server or group of servers. Um, so you probably want to consider another server for that. If, however, you know your CPU and memory utilization on the application servers are, you know, in a more reasonable range, you know, 25%, 20%, 15% on a you know average basis throughout the workday. Um, and you're not experiencing a whole lot of spikes in processing activity, you're probably safe uh, to say, yeah, we got the headroom for this and just deploy it onto existing application servers. In terms of pure disk space, um, this is deployed as, as an IIS application. And the footprint for the IIS application on the application server is less than 250 megabytes of disk space. So, you know, uh, a mere pittance of disk space on your IIS application server or servers. Um, in this case, also the SQL Server database. The Epicord Data Discovery database, that needs to be on a SQL Server. It doesn't have to be on the same SQL Server as your ERP database. Um, out of the box, consumes about 150 megabytes of disk space. It's not huge because, again, it's not a data warehouse. The only thing stored in that database is metadata. In other words, views and data structures and personalizations, basically data about data. So the SQL Server footprint is also relatively small. But of course, if your user, if you have 200 users, and every user develops 100 private data views, that database, uh, the Epicor Data Discovery database, is going to grow quickly. So that's going to depend on the specifics of your deployment and how you use the product. OK, we got one more question. Um, can refresh be triggered every so minutes? No, not as far as I can tell. That so. Um, one of the things that you're accustomed to in, uh, for example, Epicor dashboards is the ability to do auto refresh. And that is not present in Epicor data discovery. You may be able to come up with some browser trick to do that. But as far as I can tell, there was no such feature at this time inside of Epicor data discovery. In other words, when the user wants to see a fresh copy of the data, they need to hit refresh. And by the way, to that, in, in terms of application for Epicor data discovery, just want to point out that, you know, I think a part of this, uh, of figuring out what Epicor data discovery is good for and what it's not good for, is, is choosing the right audience. And I really feel like Epicor data discovery is directed at what I would call system or business analyst type users, people who want to look at aggregated data over fairly large data sets in order to identify trends, whatever those might be. You know, are our sales of fabricated products in Germany increasing or decreasing since the tariffs were put into place? Questions like that. As far as detailed operational data, I'm not sure that I would specifically consider Epicor data discovery as an application for that requirement. It's it's not intended for that. Not to say it couldn't be used for that. Not the first person, you know, and I'm guilty of it myself, 
of, you know, when the tool you have in your hand is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Well, yes, that is true, but sometimes there's better tools than a hammer. Okay, I think that that is all of the questions that we have. Um, thank you again, everybody, for joining us today. If we can get you any follow-up information or if, you know, you hang up and you have more questions later, you can reach out to myself um, by either replying to one of your reminder emails or you can reach out directly to Sam, um, his contact information. Sam, do you want to throw that screen back up there? There you go. Contact, contact information is right there. Um, we'll do whatever we can to get you answers and help you out. Um, thank you, everyone, again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.